classic. You know what else is a classic? This is an Ankyo M504, uh, circa 19, like 84 through 97. It was like some ridiculously long amount of time. And it. Is a 50 pound, 49 and a half pound. Class AB amplifier, which I know everyone's like sucking Class A's dick, but you know, I've got the kilowatt on. To be currently in this state, not playing, it's running at 50 watts, so do this. About 130 watts, so you're gonna raise your electric bill not quite as much as it would. Class A would be drawing the actual amount of wattage of every channel all the time, no matter what. And this, being class AB, is not doing that. However, 0.003% total harmonic distortion. I think that's at one kilohertz at like 90% load. So, clean boy. And I know why they made this for so long. What I don't understand is why they stopped making it. And the owner of this unit is not me. I don't have that sort of taste. I uh, got it for $400. Refurbished? Refurbished. I collect audio files off the street now. Um, I'll put him back on the street and just, here you go. $400 for 165 watts per channel. That's eight ohm. These Bucarts S400s are four ohm. So when you sit down in front of this gauge and it says watts eight, and then I hit pause, and it bounces past 10 to like 11, it actually is bouncing past 22 to like 24. So 24 watts per channel, Zeos, doesn't every like topping bullshit amp have that? Yeah, but nah. Now there are a lot of very good amps. The topping PA3 will be linked in the description because it is my, well actually let's just go get it. If you said right now I have a desk, Zeos, and I need to put speakers on and I'd be like, hold on buddy. Let me show you the way. You'd be handed one of these. And it's beautiful and small and runs on 24 to 32 volt DC. And it's very clean. It's probably as clean as this but nowhere near as powerful, and it misses one little thing. Number one, stage presence. I think if you're trying to get laid based solely on your audio equipment, well, I don't know, I don't know, it's 2019, maybe that gets you more. But certainly if you're looking to pick up dudes, y'all want the Ankyo. It's also 50 pounds versus uh, three. This also doesn't have a volume control. That at least has a volume control. You don't even get a volume control in those because it's a power amp. Onkyo Integra stereo power amplifier. Real phase power supply. I don't know what that means. Two by four capacitor block, which you can actually see. If I move, you can see that there's uh, two by four capacitors in there. Biggins. Here are the dual transformers. It's 50 pounds, and I'd say 80% of that weight is on this side, those transformers. Dual mono amplifier design, which means it's literally completely mono. I don't even know how they're attaching it together. Your power button is a big click click with an amber light. You got A and B speakers with an indicator here. It is a servo operated amplifier, which means it takes a second to click on, and then the servo load comes. Beautiful. Fucking, why is it that modern amplifiers don't have views? Because this is not a very expensive thing to implement. It's a, actually this is glass. That is, all right, this is glass. Let's put it, this, this is glass. It could be plastic, but it's better that it's glass. And then a lit thing with an LED. Like this isn't even, I don't think these are LEDs. And that's a green shield and then 
Well, it might be LEDs now. Those are LEDs now. They're LEDs now, but in the original design it wasn't. This side has wood, which is not the best looking fake wood. It kind of looks like something out of a bowling alley's like arcade. But the owner has told me he's probably going to get real wood, finish it like for reals, drill some holes, mount it to the side. What's on the side if you don't have the wood? Just nothing? Nothing. Um, we can look at the back of this, which I'm going to <clears throat> zeosis up by spinning it. As you can see in the back, we have speaker terminals A, or System 1. It's usually AB, but here it's System 1, which look different than terminals on System 2, so I think these were replaced. Yeah. You literally get inputs left and right, RCA only. I'm using the Amphenol World's Best RCA cables because I got to link something. I'm using Mica speaker cables. These are all beautiful things. Um, you only get one input. You get a ground, which I don't have currently hooked up, but we're not getting any hum. If you have a floating ground, you can ground out the amplifier with that. Attached power cords were all the rave, kind of like. Um, what are those little rat tails and like cowlex? I don't know. I hate this. This is the worst part about any old school amplifiers. You got to live with the attached power cord, which means you got to curl it up and carry it around. And it's like, oh, why? You do get an unswitched AC outlet, which I was using when I first set this up. I was using a little SMSL M100 DAC and I plugged in a USB converter for like charging an iPhone into this and then we were powering with that. So it was just one cord to plug in. Now you have to plug in this, and I'm using for my DAC. Hold on, I'll show you. Because are we done with the tour? A single set of RCA inputs. Input P. Single ground. Eight way eight. It's five way. Eight four eight five way binding posts. You got a 240 or 120 voltage selector. You got an output with a hundred max thing. It says made in Japan, motherfuckers. Because you know how hard it is to find a Japanese made amp from this era. Oh my god especially with power, and then I'm feeding it, because since it has no volume control, my choices are hook up a DAC, control FUBAR's output, which will lower the bit rate as I'm lowering the volume, or leave FUBAR maxed out, grab my remote control for my SMSL VMVD1, which is a $1,300 DAC. I see it on sale for like 900, so I'm not gonna suck its dick too hard, but it's one of the better DACs that I've, I've ever used. And I've got that. RCA out, fiber optic in, power in, remote control. I can control the volume. This is the best case scenario, especially running Bucard S400s, which are like, I don't know, the speakers I would like to listen to the most that stay, sit on my wall all the time. So let's see, let's pull up my, pull my pants out. We got this remote control, we got this remote control. If I hit next track. First of all, there's something very cathartic about watching the little dials go up to like one tenth of a watt and it's loud. Now these are four ohm speakers, so that's double. So it's more like one twenty, one fifth of a watt. It's not a warmth. I don't think it's a warmth. Like, what's the difference if I hook this up to the topping or to this? Yes. And I, I don't know how to describe the difference. Because, I mean, power, if you're using a tenth of a watt and it's 4 ohm, that'll handle 4 ohm fine. It's, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? Uh, looks. It could, it could just be looks. It, honestly, modern class D little tiny amplifiers sound fucking good. Like, I think... If I had this sitting up here getting signal and making the, the gauges move and I put that little topping PA3 in the table that was actually powering it, I wonder if anyone will be able to tell the difference. Like legitimately. So the problem is not quiet playing music. Anyone can... It's that. Wait, hold on. I don't want to play too much because this is Sam Samuel Orson, Cocaine Princess, which is from the decades when cocaine princesses exist. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brickhouse, Rob Zombie. 
I think when the draw is hard enough, high enough, fast enough, that's where that's going to fail. And that's where this is not going to fail. Now we're only pulling, uh, I just saw nine, nine to 10 watts, which means 18 to 20 watts in real life. And even if that thing is at 80, I forget how many watts per channel the topping PA3 is, but I know the top 30% of that range is distortion. Great at low volumes. I power headphones with it at low volumes. But as soon as you get anywhere past 50, 60% of its total, uh, I get nervous. And I wouldn't get nervous with this. 165 watts per channel is a lot. A lot. Let's see if we can get another. Oh, baby. I wish my GoPro was stereo sometimes because you people are missing out on this. I'm sure it's going to get me pulled off YouTube, so I'm going to stop. That's Mac Davis. Baby, don't get hooked on me. What's the year on this bitch? It's got to be from before this thing was around, right? That sounded 70s to me. I think you just get this if you want... I looked. Everyone, Everyone's talking, hey, is this thing a piece of shit? Hey, is this thing a piece of shit? No. No, I have it up on top of a plinth of uh, coffee tables next to these speakers on air pulse stands. Well, I have a, on a block too. I have a foam block under it just to get that little, little bit more height because they're angled and I just need a little bit more. And I don't think these would sound as good in my brain. And this is, here's a subject we don't talk about very often. I think I did it once or twice. I think this looking like this makes those sound better to my brain hole. It's the McGurk effect. You know about the McGurk effect? No. We'll watch a YouTube video. I'll link a YouTube video in the description called the McGurk effect. Because you could literally watch a man say the same thing over and over again, and if they play a different sound, or he changes the way his mouth moves, it looks like he's saying something else. Part of the real fucked up thing about audiophilia, and the excessive audiophilia, is expensive things sound expensive it's we're fucked up it's a it's an it's an optical illusion that our brain hears things differently from and so i don't think low volume you'd be able to tell the difference between this and a topping or most other amplifiers because it's just like a little thing a little thing down there but on high gain you'll hear it hear it like legit it won't be a joke here hold on a little too deep for me. Oh, that's quiet. It seems like they all want me to fail. Real audiophiles enjoy staring at their gear. Stare? Do you stare at it? All the time. Are you naked? Sometimes. All right. Most of the time, actually. So yeah, real audiophiles sometimes will stare at their gear in the nude because they don't want the clothes interfering with the sound. And this is one of those things that would make me want to do that. And it, it's not a joke. It's like expensive audio cables, expensive speaker cables. I love these mica cables. I use them for everything. You know why? Because I know they work. Because the scientist part of my brain says these work. But when I go to my big amps, I pick up these because a man in Australia said, hey, I gotta make you some speaker cables. And I'm like, cool. And there they are. I don't have to use this at all. It's jewelry from my, from my system. The reason there's VUs, the reason why there's two of them. A lot of this has to do with just looking at it and your brain believing it's gonna sound better. And I'm probably gonna get a shitload of flack for this, but not like the downloadable type, like the type that gets stuck in your pancreas and you have to go to surgery. I love the way this sounds, but I think I love the way it looks better. I think that's more important to me right now than how it sounds. Now it sounds warm. It looks big. It looks like it's gonna throw these drivers straight out of them, but I'm not even running at like more than 20 watts. So why get something like this? You wanna answer that? Uh, impress the ladies. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. Straight lie. I don't know, here's the thing. 
I'm not gonna shit on vintage amps because I, I have, here's mine. Here's my phase linear model 400 sitting under a table because we were playing with it and it's got the Cylon eyes and I love it so I'm gonna have it repaired and here's my father's spec 2 pioneer spec 2 oh baby it sits down here not doing anything because it throws a protection light and uh, I'll link in the description because I want to make a relationship with them um, they're called just audio they're down by DC oh god don't fall and they're gonna take a look at this and they're gonna fix it and I'm gonna use that to judge things and I'm gonna make myself feel better as an audiophile. Because I don't believe this at certain volumes in most situations is gonna actually perform better than a modern Class D. But in certain places, in certain situations with certain speakers, I think you'll hear a difference. But you'll always see a difference, always. Like I could have loaded my cat in a box and plug speaker wires into her. Let her sleep. And it probably wouldn't sound as good. So really this is a bullshit review. I have nothing to say because it's, it's, there's nothing bad to say about it. You, you, you buy one of these, you get yourself a preamp. It doesn't have to be the SMSL VMVD one. You hook up it up in your living room or in your den or your study, $400 for that for Japanese glass. Shit. I'm done. I'm gonna play some more music on it. I'm gonna listen to these speakers a little bit more and then we're gonna probably eat some meatloaf and then go to bed. That's, that's my night. See, I don't even know if it's gonna count as like more separation. You know what I gotta do, right? No. I gotta hook up the topping. Fuck. All right, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. I gotta go and convince myself that this is definitely worth four hundred dollars. All right, never mind. It totally is. Look at those gauges. Ah! I know this review should be over now, but I got I got real bored, and now the right channel is playing out of the big amp, and the left channel is playing out of the little amp. The little amp is plugged into the 100 watt output of this, so when I unpause it or unmute it, and and using absolutely no science whatsoever, and just balancing the left and right, and using that to control the volume. Um, I, I'm feeling the drivers in the back. I'm feeling the passive radius. So I think there's more bass and there's nothing. There's no difference that I can discern from left and right. And that's not the way you test an amp, but I just want to show you that I have gone this far after the review to try to like get my head around shit. Like vocals aren't more prevalent there. If I switch it to mono, to, 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 uh, to, uh, up, 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 up. God, this thing is fucking pretty. Oh, don't forget to check out the Patreon. We get to see these reviews early. I'll stop to do that. Check out the Patreon, see these reviews early, even though this one really doesn't matter unless you want to buy one of these on eBay, in which case. There's plenty of them. But I, you do need to get it redone to have it look this nice. Holy fuck, this looks nice. So $5 gets you into that, also gets you into the yard sale. $2 gets you all the wallpapers um, for free. Uh, well, for free. They're artists, but you can look them up and um, $10 tier gets you into the private telegram chat where those people have been begging me. Actually, you're from the private telegram chat. I am. What's it like in there? Tell the people. It's pretty nice. Kind of scary sometimes. Nice Nike shirt. I don't want to get your beard. Let's just want to close up of your beard. Now we're good. All right. You know what? I'll film my cat. We're done for the evening. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to download the wallpaper in the description. I'm going to do the tubers.